You're back. We're back. Okay. okay. You were back. All right. So we're here. So I'm here with Jorge. We're going to try this again. Luis Salgato from Peru um, to talk about and share some wisdom of the, of the Inca at this time. Um, and as we were just quickly saying, so Jorge, thank you for your patience as we had a little bit of a technical difficulty there. Um, but I just want to touch base with everybody. I see people are saying that we're back. Thank you guys. I'm doing this a little bit differently than normal. Um, so Jorge, just so we can get into the energy, tell us a little bit about what's happening at this time. The energy of the light, you're calling it the new light or, um, you know, the, a new frequency and light is coming to us here at this time. What, what can you share with us about that? Well, you know, in our tradition, we believe everything uh, happens in cycles. And uh, we believe that uh, this is the time when we are entering into a new day. You know, 500 years of daytime, 500 years of nighttime. You know, it started in 1992. When we start to open many portals, we start to get in in a different frequencies slowly. But the last part, you know, has to be a little bit strong. So this is the time, you know, when uh, we arrive in, into the 2022. For some elders, the sunrise moment in this cycle of 500 years, uh, it started in 1992 to the 2022, okay? So uh, always, you know, before to see the full sun, before the sunrise, it gets darker, but uh, the process anyway had to happen. You know, there is some things in life that we had to experience anyway. Our, uh, our tradition, we believe uh, that everything has to do to return to the essence, to return to the roots. We have in this opportunity, the, uh, we are experiencing what we call the Taripai Pacha, we call also the Wilkakuti, we call the Pachakuti. Uh, we give different names according which aspects we are seeing from it. For example, from the Pachacuti, we say uh, the return to the essence of the cosmos. What is the essence of the cosmos? The spirit. So return to the spirit. And how is the spirit? The spirit is always joyful. The spirit doesn't need a reason to be joyful. And at the night, uh, we believe that uh, in order to be happy, to enjoy life, we need to have good reasons. I mean, good reasons, the kind of material reasons, you know, superficial reasons. But in a, in a natural way, all, every spirit, everybody in deep sense doesn't need really a good reason. So it is interesting nowadays, we start to see that we have our choice to be really unhappy or to be with the spirit and the spirit is happy. Because when we see that, we see we may be lost many things, friends, family, but uh, we have something and we are that we have life. As we are life, as we have life, we have everything. You know, it's, it was very difficult to understand that one. We believe, yes, I am alive, but I am attached to something else, okay? I'm attached to some, uh, you know, with what I identify myself. I have a perception of myself according of my status, my hierarchy, my economy, my country, you know, whatever. But now the only thing we can say, I am alive. And as I am alive, I have everything I need. And I am here in this process that we call Wilgaguti. And what is a Wilka? Wilka is divine. Wilka is sacred. Wilka is the sun. Wilka is the light. So Wilka Kuti means the return to the light, the return to the essence. Do you remember the doorway we went in at Lake Titicaca, the famous Adamo Muru doorway, people call, 
One of the names, the native name is Wilka Uta, the portal of the light, the portal of divinity. And uh, we used to say the 2011, when we have a big gathering there, I was asking our friends, where is Wilka Uta? Everybody was pointing in the doorway. And I said, well, that is one Wilka Uta. But the most important, it is in our hearts. So when we are in our hearts, we are returning to the house of divinity. But more than that symbol, it is very important that we are returning to the meaning of life as divine, the life as sacred. It's not easy really to love life if we don't love ourselves, if we don't rediscover that divinity, that divine inside of us. And in our tradition, that divine also we call the sun, also we call the light. So that is the inner sun, that is the inner light, that is the flame in our hearts. So when we are there, we find our strength. And that light for us is love. All light is love. That light is in service. There is no love that is not in service. That light is wise. So everybody that we consider ourselves, we are light. We always can say, I am wise. I am love. I am in service to life. I am in service to light. As all light is in service to me. We are all together in service because we are all one light. I could just hear, I love it when you talk about the simplicity of remembering that we are light inside, we are divine. And I think that as we're stepping into this time of change, um, we're kind of being pushed to really look at that, to really step in. So one of the things I wanna talk about or have you shared, and just really quickly, Jorge, now that we're running well on live, let me just, Kind of step back for a second for everyone who's just joining in. I'm here with the amazing Jorge Luis Delgado out of Lima, Peru right now, out of Peru. Um, he's a wonderful um, guide and teacher and um, here to share some wisdom from the Inca. Um, and I know that we were just in Peru with you, my friends, John um, Mercedes and Julian Santini, the doorway is my favorite place. Um, but one of the things that you have always kind of taught in such a simple way, or one of the things I would love to understand, and then it'll go into my next question. You say this in a lot, and you've said this a lot in your teachings, who are the children of the sun? Uh, everybody, we are children of the sun. Everybody, we are considered raised from the same sun. As children of the sun, we are a contribution to life. What brings the Father's Son? The Father's Son brings that love that is in service to life. Whatever the Father's Son touch brings more vital energy. And whatever is our family, you know, the children of the Son and the children of the Mother Earth, we are one family. And everything that touch the father's son is our family that is alive. So when we are considering ourselves as a children of the son, it is because we want to be like the father's son. What is the most important teachings of the father's son? The father's son is like a portal that brings that light of love, service, and wisdom. So the children of the sun, we, we share that light through our lives. So, but we have to really understand that light. So we understand and we embody that light and we embody that light as love. So that means we have to go through the process to love ourselves, which is the most tricky part. 
Sometimes we believe that, of course, we do it, but we don't really have much practice doing that. Because if we see whatever, wherever we arrive during this night in the belief of the things, we, we did what we did to our beloved Mother Earth. In this way of competition, trying to feed the ego, we got you know, to a situation that all life has to find their own way to balance it. And we can see every sin can regenerate. And as we understand the first qualities of the Father Son is to see that with clarity. What is going on with the beloved Mother Earth? What is the meaning of this light. But from where we get the clarity from the inner sun is not only the mind. In the mind, we can victimize ourselves. We can even say in a good sense, you know, it's a kind of punishment. We were not good, but it's not really about that. It is really about to see how we become in that change in that ray of light. But in reality, we will see it's not really about changing. We are changing what we believe we are, but we are just recovering our essence. We are returning to our light. That's why one of the names we use to call this period of the time is Taripai Pacha the time to find ourselves. We've been so distracted by so many things, so many manipulations we've been pushed, you know. So here we are in middle of our houses. We stay inside, we stay at home, but we don't really, we are not really practicing the most important part, part of it, to get into our hearts, to get into our inner sun and start to using the qualities of the light. So we've been talking about this clarity, clarifying our histories. What in our lives we experience doesn't come from the light. What doesn't come from love it is not good for us to carry anymore. Mm -hmm. Whatever we carry from the past is in front of us until we decided to let it go because we cannot stop seeing it. And that is why we have a kind of perception of ourselves. If we let it go, if we forgive, we open really to the new. But for that, we need to be very clear. As a ray of the sun, as a children of the light, how is our dream? What kind of dream we want to bring? What kind of contribution we mean? How we are going to impact in the new day? So we can start to go through all these qualities of the light. You know, we are organizing a, a webinar with our friends, uh, John and uh, Julian, and uh, we are going to go step by step for exploring those qualities of the light. You know, the, the transparency, the luminosity, the warmth, you know, the, the, the brightness. You, you know, but uh, we are not talking about uh, the, this kind like, uh, like uh, at the night. At the night, we are searching bright night, bright minds. And wherever we go in all the schools, the universities, we will see all the students and teachers are 100% in the mind. Where is that we remember ourselves? Where we train ourselves to be bright souls, to be bright hearts? It's natural, it's there, but we create resistance. 
strong resistance because we had to play card with our society. So now when everybody has to start in the same condition, definitely everything is gonna change, everything is changing. So, but there is something, everybody, we have the opportunity to shine in the same way. So we cannot see really which race impacting in which place. We are just have the, the joy to bring the new light of the new day. So we are the race of the sunrise. And this race of the sunrise is very important. In our tradition, we believe that the first race of the sun is the fruit of the heart is the fruit of the soul. So it's very important for us, the solar practices. Through this uh, webinar, we will be experiencing many of the solar practices that is combined with the breathing practices that makes stronger the immune system, that nurtures the soul. Because nowadays is when really we need to be guided by our soul we need to manifest our dream from the soul. It's not anymore only the ego. It's not anymore only the mind. It's not anymore I think and then I exist. Maybe this is the time when I, we say, I can feel that love. I know it's love. Then I exist. Okay? So the difference is huge right now. Everybody is experiencing these, uh, uh, these questions. Everywhere I can see people analyzing, but all the points of view are important. Everybody is important. Everybody brings a contribution. Mm -hmm. And I think that's perfect. One of the things, Jorge, that you are talking about with uh, and I just saw a couple of comments. I was I was checking out um, some of the thoughts on Facebook, and I think this the reality that I would like to stress a lot for people and what Jorge's teaching is coming back to stuff about the heart, the sun, our heart space, and learning to be within the space of our heart and learning to radiate our energy from the center of our being than from our mental space. And I feel that it's very simple to learn to be in the heart space for, for folks who are on my page, know me a lot. I teach about the heart breath, um, the heart coherence that I know we both have uh, connected with in Sedona last year. Um, That's so right. in this particular sharing, I think what I'd love to kind of just jump into with you as well is talking about this particular time as we're moving through this change with the virus affecting our world, um, letting go of the, the heavy thoughts and stepping into the lighter thoughts. And one of the things that you said in a, a video I was watching of yours recently is that, and I loved how you said it, um, our, our good thoughts feel warm to us. Uh, good thoughts about ourselves in our heart feel warm. And when we have challenging or, or, or negative thoughts about ourselves, it tends to feel cold. And learning to understand the feeling of that energy um, as we're, we're letting go of um, a lot of the, the stress that we're feeling. Is there anything that you would just share about stepping more into the heart so that we can shed that heaviness, shed that past holding and step higher into that, that frequency of light? Well, you know, I, I was saying that uh, one of the most important messages, you know, the virus is a messenger. So one of the most important messages is to stay in your retreat and to get into your heart. Mm -hmm. So from there, we can observe how is my life in every attitude. I mean, how we walk. Nowadays, we cannot walk much, but we still we need to walk a little bit, at least in the space we have. We need to see how, what we eat, what we drink, how we dream, how we speak. Everything is different when we come from the heart because we used to be too mechanic, too automatic, too predictable. 
we had a life that really was something automatic, something that was not very, very present. So when we start to experience the present moment in each practice, in each experience of life, we are returning to the divine. But when we start to see that, if we, if we sleep properly, or we just want to the physical body as physical body, as a material resting, it has to do much with a big question in this message of the virus is about how is your immune system? And the immune system has to do with the emotional body, with the mental body, has to do with the physical body. It has to do with the light of the father's son. Okay. Absolutely. And so one other question I would love to talk to you about, which I think is so important with what the virus is also bringing to us is the- We are experiencing that. Oh, sorry, Jorge, are you still there? I think I lost you for a second. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, it, it was a phone call. The point is that we are now observing all these uh, ways how we experience life. And uh, that coming from the light, from the heart, is always different. It is, uh, uh, I used to put this example, how we are speaking. Are we speaking only from the mind or we can take it, those thoughts to the heart to bring it with wisdom? Whatever we can speak, we can share, we can question it, or we can just communicate with the other person. It has to come from the heart, everything from the heart. When we come from the heart, it's different. When we speak from the heart, we are writing in the heart of the other person. Mm -hmm. When we are writing, we cannot erase unless the person that is receiving the message cleans it, erases it. So it is very special, every action of the day in our lives, every way how we, we, we experience life in all aspects, what we are drinking, what we are eating is amazing. Each aspect is so profound that has to do with the immune system. It has to do to bring a higher level of frequencies. We need to elevate, but we are already elevating but with this virus, everybody, we start to feel that fear. Of course, everybody, we feel, we are humans, but we cannot let the fear guide our lives. So I, I will be sharing how we believe, how we practice the Summa Kamanya. Summa Kamanya means, uh, harmonizing life, how we can bring the joyful life. But it's not only about the outside world. If we are not in harmony with ourselves, if we are not in peace with ourselves, if we are not comfortable with ourselves, we are not comfortable with anybody. We are not in peace with anybody. We are not in harmony with anybody. But of course, it's their fault. Hmm? So it's our tendency to to find, you know, uh, the guilty person situation. But this is a society, you know, of um, the victimization because it, we are not healed. Everybody in our world, we need to harmonize. We need to transform all the heaviness of our histories, all the densities of our, our experience of life. Because if we keep carrying it, 
we will see that we will just repeat the same kind of life we had. Maybe a little bit bigger, that will be all. And I love in one of the things we have to get honest with ourselves and really kind of see our truth and what we need to change. I know that's something I'm working through right now as well is just what do I need to shift in my life to step into the higher frequency and where do I need to be honest? So I think that's an amazing share. Jorge, one question I was just yeah. starting to ask when we're having a little uh, phone moment there is one real important thing I believe that is a, a, a message of what's happening right now is to be more connected and respectful of the mother earth. I believe that's uh, a big message. We were talking offline before we went live about, um, I know uh, those, um, the sites in Peru right now are closed. I know the sites in Egypt and my friends in India, um, all of these sacred sites are taking a nap and a rest from us. <laughs> Is there anything you can share as to how we can send love? I, I know I'm always, you know, in meditations with my teachings, sending love to Mother Earth, but is there a way that we can also be in love and service to her, to her needs at this time? Yes, uh, well, you know, a few days ago, we celebrate the, the Earth Day. You know, in the Western world, they say the Earth Day. In the Indian world, we say the, the Mother Earth. And when we say about the mother, it's more alive. Okay, and when we say the earth, or when we just say planet earth, it sounds very material, okay, mm -hmm. like an object. So the point is this, you know, we can really respect the mother earth. We can consider our um, guardians of the mother earth. We can consider we're in service to the mother earth. But if we don't love ourselves, we cannot love the Mother Earth. We cannot love anybody, okay? It's a nature, our nature that we are loved, but we really need to go deeper in the meaning to love ourselves. And as we love ourselves, we can really, we can really harmonize with the Mother Earth. In our tradition, that's the way how we see if we are growing spiritually or we stuck. I mean, how do you know if you are evolving, if you are growing spiritually? You know, most of the time we believe to the mind and say, yes, of course, I, I am the top master in love. But really? Well, then let's see. How is your relation? If you live in harmony with the seven relations. The first relation, how is your love, service and wisdom with the mother earth? Do you have really a relationship? Do you have some communications with the mother earth? Or do you just respect? Respect is part, but much deeper than that is really that love. When we offer ourselves to be in service, when we say, okay, mother, I can give you a hand to manifest what you want to bring for all your children. And who are the children of the mother earth? Everybody who drink the milk of her, the milk of the mother earth, that is water. So how? we can give a hand to the mother earth to take care of all her children where we are. So how we can communicate, you know, our gratitude, how the mother comes to assist us in our process. The mother is vital in our process and I, she is also wise. She is pure love. She is in service to every creature that's alive. That is her children. So the connection with the mother for the Indian people is so profound because we love the mother so much as we love the father's son. 
So the first relation to harmonize for us is with the mother earth. Second relation with the father son, because we need to be grateful why we are alive here. We are alive because the mother earth and the father son. Without them, there is no life. Absolutely. You can ask to any scientist in all this galaxy and other super universes. For us, for the children of the sun, the children of the mother earth, there is no life without them. Of course, we are so grateful to our beloved personal mother. We came through her. But then on the third, the third relation is the family. The first portal that we have to expand love, service, and wisdom, the blood family, our first uh, opportunity, the cosmic opportunity to expand our love. Mm -hmm. The fourth relation, the neighbors on the left side, the fifth relation is the past that is in front of us. The sixth relation, it is the future that is behind. The seventh relation is that the love, service, and wisdom with ourselves. But all is predictable. It has to do with the seven relation, the sixth relation. The future has to do with the with the fifth relation. The fifth that's the past. We can predict the future of the humanity. The future of the humanity will be the same if we don't change, if we don't transform the past, if we don't let it go, if we don't forgive for all these wars we did between humans, if we We might don't do forgive each other, pretending that there is. So there is so much to share. Hello? I am, we're still here, Jorge. We had a small pause and you were just sharing a little bit about forgiveness and then we cut up with you. <laughs> I know you're, you're. Well, you, you, you know, the other day when we've been in another uh, uh, conversation, I was saying, you know, I had a dream to go to Tibet, you know, for mm -hmm. us, Tibet is the masculine polarity, the Himalayas, focus in Tibet, and do a ceremony, the male ceremony there, the ceremony of the forgiveness for the wars who we create, the wars, the killing, all this violence. And in the feminine polarity at the Lake Titicaca, the ceremony with the ladies, the women, the sacredness of the feminine returning because this cycle is feminine, but positive. And I remember in November, we were at Lake Titicaca and bringing in that beautiful energy and healing and support and service. Love, service, wisdom, Jorge, I love it. I'm so grateful. What I wanna do is take a quick moment for every, we've had people chiming in on Facebook. We've got a lot of folks out there saying hello and sharing their love. So I just wanna say hello to everybody. I'm working a little technology blind. So I keep um, checking my phone for questions and comments. Um, and there's a lot of love. One of the things I wanna share with everybody about Jorge, um, you can go deeper into these teachings that he's talking about today called uh, in a webinar, a series of webinars, um, called Return to the Sacred Through the Portal of New Light. And this will be with my colleagues and friends, uh, uh, Julianne Santini and John Mercedi over at Profound Life Wellness. And I'll place a, a link in the comments for anybody who's interested in going much deeper with Jorge's teachings here um, and stepping into the, the cycle of this new energy and frequency. Um, Jorge, one thing before um, we have a few more, if you have a few more moments for me, um, I know the solstice is a big one this year. Is there anything that you can share with us in preparation for that energy that's stepping in in just a little over a month and a half now? 
Yes, for the Andean people, for us is very important because the, the 20 or the 21st of June is our new year. We call Inti Raimi the festivity of the sun, the celebration of the Father Son. And we, we, we are grateful to the Father for the light, for life, for the wisdom, for that love, that everyday impact in ourselves, in all life. So also in the high plateau area, we call the Wilkakuti. And the Wilkakuti means the return to the sacredness. You know, we believe that uh, always we have to return to the essence, to the roots. So this is the time when we start to begin. And always we want to start the new day with the, the new year, the new cycle. In this time, the biggest new cycle, you know, with a new perception of life. We want to start for, with the guidance with the dream of our soul. We wanna experience our soul. We wanna let our souls be part of our lives. Guiding, having that interaction because we had really, we had the opportunity to experience life based only in the mind and most of the time based in the ego. So the new year, we will be celebrating, we will be doing some ceremonies and solar practices to start pulling from the galactic sun by the father sun to the inner sun, the first rays of this new cycle. I'm so excited and I can't wait. I know we're in such an amazing and extraordinary time of change and growth, but I think that um, with some of this wisdom that you're sharing with us, Jorge, we can step deeper into our hearts and step further into the, the radiance. One other piece here really quickly. So uh, for everybody who's tuning in or, or just been tuning in, um, I'm here with Jorge Luis Delgado from Peru, a wonderful uh, Chakarana, a bridge, a bridge person and teacher and um, extraordinary guide who has brought us through Peru. Um, if anybody wants to learn more, he's got some wonderful books. I've got your books here, Jorge. <laughs> oh, thank, thank you very much. Oh, good. <laughs> and uh, Indian Awakening, which are lovely, by the way. And talk a lot about some of these teachings um, of the Inca. And, and it's such a simple concept, isn't it, Jorge? It seems extraordinary in a way that, that we're, we're saying to step into love. Um, and I love how you say love is in service always. And I feel that sometimes people struggle with what that means to step into love. Um, and I just want to share for everybody, and I know with Jorge, we did this in Peru, that it's as simple as bringing your heart, your mind into your heart. And, and starting with a breath in the heart, you like to connect us with the energy of the sun. Jorge, is there a little technique or something really simple that you can share with us to just help that connection from the Inca perspective? Well, you know, one of the easiest teachings is to greet yourself as you greet the father sun. Every day, we just open our arms, you know? open arms and we let the father son touch the inner son. From there, we go through the, all the cells, the lily suns. We are a container of lily suns, millions of suns. So as we see shining it, we can see that we are a bubble of light. And that this light, it is just, luminous, this is just powerful. So this is the way how we greet ourselves as we greet the Father Son. Because when we know that light shining in itself, you know, that we are remembering itself is love, is in service and it's wise. And it's just powerful, it's so powerful to let remember each cell. Every cell has some functions, but every cell has only one cause. The cause is to keep you alive. So perfect. 
So um, for everyone, it's that simple. You are a gorgeous light. Wake up every morning, stretch your energy to the sun, let it connect to your heart and expand your luminous essence. Jorge, this has been amazing. Um, and I am in deep gratitude for you spending some time here with all of us on Facebook and sharing this wonderful wisdom. Um, and uh, we'll share again in the comment section, everybody. Thank you. We've had people, by the way, tuned in from all over the world. I see some folks who are tuned in all the way from Ireland and overseas. And we're just sending you all love as we're moving through this time of change and challenge. Um, but remember that you, and I think the beautiful message of, of working with Jorge today is to remember that inside you are light, you are the sun, and you are here to radiate gorgeously. Um, so Jorge, I'm so grateful for your time today. Thank you for being here with us. Oh, thank you, my friend, for having me in this uh, beautiful program. And I wish you the best. I wish your inner sun shines brighter every day. We're Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Jorge. Stay safe and healthy um, in Peru. And thank you for just taking some time with us tonight. <laughs> thank you very much. Good night. Good night, everyone. Thank you on Facebook. We appreciate it. And uh,